Hey everybody, welcome back. Sorry the video is late this week, but I have a really good excuse. A couple of days ago, Joe Coalmo, Joe's Concept Album Month, which runs in March, ended, and I'm happy to report that um, actually a couple of days before it ended, really it was uh, Tuesday night that I put the last uh, sort of finishing touch on the end-to-end uh, -end album mix. I completed my concept album that I set out to create uh, starting on March 1st. So, um, my insiders have already gotten uh, notice. If you are an insider, um, then you, uh, you have access to a kind of sneak preview of the record. Right now it's just one big long track that is uh, put up on our um, kind of a, you know, video server um, and uh, in that format. So uh, folks can at least, if you're an insider, you can go hear the album end to end and I think there's actually some links in the description underneath the video that let you skip around to where the track markers are going to be. Uh, but um, that's an insider's freebie because the, uh, the album is going to be released publicly. It'll probably take me a couple of weeks. I just want to put together, uh, you know, I have to slice the album up into the actual tracks and the separate files. Uh, I want to put a little bit of artwork together um, and uh, some liner notes to talk about the process and stuff. And I'll probably release that on Bandcamp. Uh, so I'm hoping maybe sometime in the next three to four weeks to get that online for everybody else to hear. So um, overall, how did the album come out? I'm actually really, really, really happy with the content of the record. Um, I actually started the uh, the process, started the the. Uh, month with uh, the month of March with a fair amount of notes. I had actually a, a pretty developed vision of what I wanted the concept of the record to be about. Uh, I had a lot of notes about different songs and content for those songs. Um, so I feel like I, I feel like that kind of came together and I and I sort of uh, you know I, I feel pretty happy about how I captured that the, that idea and those concepts. Um, the part of the record that, of course, as I expected, would be weak is the production. You know, um, there's at least half a dozen songs that I, I wanted to add things to that I, I, you know, I hear the song and I'm like, oh, I know exactly where I would have put that harmony part or I know exactly that extra little layer I wanted to add or there's one song where I just really wanted some kind of percussion. Um, but I just ran out of time. <laughs> so, you know, there's that aspect of it. And then, of course, there's also kind of the production and performance quality aspects, right? I mean, there were nights that I was cranking through material as fast as I could. Uh, there's a bunch of tracks on the record that are uh, big, you know, three and four and five part acapella pieces that, uh, you know, I wish I had better time to focus on tuning and focus on, um, you know, uh, rhythmic. Uh, syncing up of the parts and things like that. So it was uh, it was definitely a challenge from that standpoint. On the whole, I think the album sounds pretty good, um, but it's definitely not going to sound polished like anything that uh, that we put out with North uh, or uh, some of the other projects that I've worked on. So it's definitely a little rough from that standpoint. But uh, I think you know, for somebody who, uh, who who isn't bothered too much by that stuff, I think it can still be a really interesting listen to kind of sit down and soak in the album. Um, it is something that I recommend listening to end to end, at least the first maybe couple of times that you listen to it, just to really uh, kind of get the concepts. There's a lot of themes on the album that repeat, um, and uh, you know, kind of things like that. So I, uh, I recommend uh, you know the first couple of listens. Try listening end to end in a relatively distraction-free environment uh, if you can, just to kind of get the concept album you know kind of uh, idea of it and uh, feel for it. Um, the other thing is uh, good stereo imaging. If you're listening through headphones, that's great. If you're listening um, in any other environment, that you uh, try to listen in a place where you get pretty good stereo imaging, because I actually played a lot with panning on the record and have things that are switching back and forth between left and right, and um, you know, not that it's uh, you know really spacey that way, but but there's definitely some spots where you'll you'll benefit um, from, in the experience from uh, from being able to do that. So anyway, um, I'm very tired, and uh, but also very uh, very happy that it all came together. So uh, I, um, you know, looking forward to feedback from my insiders. If you've listened to it, um, I'd love to see something on the Facebook page uh, or anywhere else that you'd like to leave a comment. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting out uh, the album publicly in uh, in a few weeks and uh, getting feedback from wider audience as well. So um, real quick, just to address how the kind of rules came together, right? Um, if you remember, Joe Coalmo has uh, the rule of 40, the rule of 30, the rule of 20, the rule of 10, right? So um, real quick, I, uh, I'll share with you the track list of the record. 
Um, so there's 16 tracks on the album. Um, the rule of 40 said that the album should be at least 40 minutes long, and I actually, oh, sort of, without really realizing it, really blew that away. I, I, the album time came in at 65 minutes and 43 seconds end to end, so uh, definitely, definitely good with that. Um, the rule of 30 said that the album had to be no more than 30% pre-written. Um, the rule of 20 said that it had to be no more than 20% pre-recorded. So uh, it turns out that if you look at the, uh, the list of tracks, if you look at the times of each track and what percentage of them um, were kind of uh, pre-recorded or pre-written, it actually turns out that, um, that the album was like really only about 11-12% pre-written, uh, same, same order of magnitude pre-recorded. And uh, that leaves plenty of margin. You know, there's a couple little spots on the record where samples are sprinkled in, and some of those samples may have been recorded uh, before March 1st, so they might, you know, this pre-recorded number might be slightly higher. Um, but, uh, you know, I uh, thankfully was able to, uh, to meet both of those goals as well. Um, the rule of 10, which said that the album could be 10% covers, didn't really apply. This is uh, all original material in this case. Um, and uh, although there's, there's lots of samples used of, of other people's material in there and, and other kind of pre-recorded things, but uh, there, I didn't really do any cover material in the sense of actually like a song written by someone else. Um, so yeah, um, I'm really grateful that I was able to kind of make all those goals. Um, I'm really looking forward to people's thoughts on the record. Um, this is, uh, I mean, in one way it's sort of not a real album because it was this crazy experimental thing. But on the other hand, uh, I just put out an album, which I haven't, haven't really had a hand in doing since 2008. So this is uh, kind of, uh, every once in a while I'll sit back and think, wow, I just made a record. <laughs> so um, that's, that's kind of a big deal for me, especially after the, the long period uh, that, I, uh, that I had off. So um, thanks much for listening. And uh, what I'm probably gonna do is over the next couple of weeks, I'll kind of walk through this list talk more about the songs a little bit, how they came together. There's some interesting process things that happened, some happy accidents on the record that happened, and I'm gonna be sharing those in the weeks to come. So for those of you who are particularly interested in the process or the infra art uh, side of it, as I call it, um, we uh, have some uh, cool videos to look forward to, I hope. So thanks again, talk to you next week. Okay, so real quick, I did wanna provide you with some new music for this week. Um, uh, probably the next couple of weeks I'm going to be throwing at you other Joe Coalmo records that uh, came out. Um, one, of, uh, one of my friends from the world of music back in Michigan uh, registered uh, to uh, do Joe Coalmo along with us this uh, first year. And he actually cranked out this really interesting uh, little album. Um, he did it under the project name Lobsta Thermidor. And, uh, the records, uh, I think, maybe got about uh, 15 tracks on it or so. Um, most of them are pretty short. Uh, what's really cool about the record is that it's, it's, it's all over the place. It's actually kind of a funny record to listen to. Uh, a lot of different musical sounds on it. Um, I think the, the concept of the, the concept album was basically that uh, he, he put out this record as an alter ego, as a, as a different person. Uh, who is maybe just this completely insane individual who decided to, to record an album. Um, so in addition to the content of the music really being a lot of fun to listen to, it's really just fun to listen to, um, the production quality is actually fantastic. Uh, like there's so many different instruments and the sound is really, really good. Um, and uh, I've, I've given it one full listen so far and, uh, and plan to, to spend it a couple more times, but I wanted to share it with you because uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. So the name of the album is The Marshmallow to Oat Ratio Has Been Reversed. Uh, the project name again is Lobsta Thermidor. And uh, this was another record that was put out for Joe Coalmo 2016. So I hope you enjoy listening to that and uh, talk to you again soon.